Hey everyone, you know when you're shopping online and you really want to see those product details up close? That little image zoom feature that lets you check the stitching on a pair of shoes or the texture of fabric before you buy? Well, here's the thing. This feature is actually surprisingly simple to build, but I've seen so many new developers struggle with it. Some even end up loading entire libraries just to get that basic zoom functionality working. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build it yourself with just a few lines of clean code. No heavy dependencies, no complicated setups, just pure CSS and JavaScript doing exactly what we need. If this sounds helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And drop a comment below. Your suggestion might just become our next video topic. Now let me walk you through my simple setup. In my HTML, I have a clean card layout with just an image container and our product image inside. Nothing complicated, just the essentials. For the CSS, let me show you what I've set up. The card container is a perfect square, 350 by 350 pixels with a 1 to 1 aspect ratio to keep it consistent. I'm using CSS variables for the background, border, and shadows so everything stays maintainable. Now for the image container. I'm making it take up the full width and height of its parent. The image itself uses object fit, cover, which is perfect for product photos because it maintains the aspect ratio while filling the entire space. I also added a nice UX touch. When you hover over the image, the cursor changes to zoom in. This subtle hint tells users they can interact with the image. There's also a clever pseudo element after the image container that creates some extra space below. This will be important later when we add the zoom functionality. Now here's the clever part. The zoom effect doesn't actually happen on the original image itself. Instead, I create a virtual copy using CSS pseudo elements. Think of it like having a duplicate image that we can manipulate separately. I use the before pseudo element as our zoom canvas. It's like a hidden layer that appears only when we need it. This approach keeps our HTML clean and gives us full control over the zoom behavior. The real magic happens with CSS variables. I create custom properties for the zoom position, zoom X and zoom Y, that we can control from JavaScript. These variables move the zoomed image around based on where the user hovers. Now, here's a crucial detail I want to point out. The after pseudo element we're using for our zoom layer, it's not actually in DOM. That means we can't directly manipulate it with JavaScript like we would with regular HTML elements. So here's my workaround. In my HTML, I set a variable called URL with the path to our image. Then in the CSS, I tell the after element to use that variable for its background image. This way, when I need to change the image dynamically, I just update the CSS variable from JavaScript and the pseudo element automatically picks up the change. It's like having a backdoor to control elements that are otherwise off limits to JavaScript. Now I'm setting up the rest of our control variables right here in the HTML. You can see I've added three CSS variables in line, visibility to control when the zoom layer appears, and zoom X and zoom Y to track the cursor position. Just like we did with the image URL, I'm declaring these directly on the element so we can update them dynamically later. The visibility starts as visible for testing, but we'll change that to hidden once we hook up the JavaScript. Now let me show you how these variables come to life in our CSS. In the after pseudo element, I'm connecting all the pieces together. The visibility property uses our visibility variable. This controls when the zoom layer appears and disappears. The background image pulls from our URL variable, making sure we're always showing the right image. And here's the real magic. The background position uses both zoom X and zoom Y to dynamically position the zoomed image based on where the user is hovering. I've set the background size to 200% to create that zoomed in effect. You can adjust this to make the zoom stronger or more subtle. The no repeat ensures we only see one clean copy of the image, not multiple tiles. What's beautiful about this setup is that every dynamic aspect of our zoom effect is now controlled by these four variables. When we update them from JavaScript, the CSS automatically responds, creating that smooth, interactive zoom experience without any complex DOM manipulation. Now for the interactive part. I'm grabbing our image container with getElementById and listening for mouse movements. When your mouse moves over the image, 
I calculate the exact position as a percentage. Here's the simple math. I take the mouse's x position, divide it by the total width, and multiply by 100 to get a percentage. I do the same for the y position. Then I instantly update our CSS variables with these new percentage values. The set property method is perfect for this. It lets me dynamically change CSS variables right from JavaScript. Watch what happens when I move my mouse around now. The background position updates in real time, creating that smooth tracking effect where the zoom follows your cursor perfectly. It's like having a magnifying glass that always knows exactly where you're looking. Now I'm adding the another piece, controlling when the zoom layer appears and disappears. I am setting visibility hidden in HTML. And when your mouse enters the image area, I immediately set the visibility variable to visible to reveal the zoom layer. This happens instantly, so the zoom appears the moment you hover over the image. Then as you move your mouse around, I continue updating the position variables to keep the zoom tracking your cursor perfectly. But what happens when you're done zooming? I've added a mouse out event listener that sets the visibility back to hidden the moment your cursor leaves the image area. This creates a polished user experience. The zoom appears instantly when you need it, follows your movement smoothly, and disappears cleanly when you're done. Now for the last step, positioning our zoom layer perfectly over the original image. I'm adding position relative to the parent container, which creates a positioning context for our zoom layer. Then I set the after element to position absolute with top and left at zero pixels. This combination means the zoom layer now sits exactly on top of our original image, creating that seamless overlay effect. The zoom appears right where you expect it, without any awkward jumps or offsets. And that's really all there is to it. We've built a fully functional image zoom feature, the same kind you see on professional e-commerce sites, using just a handful of CSS and JavaScript. No external libraries, no complicated dependencies, just clean, efficient code that does exactly what we need. It's amazing how much you can accomplish with just a few lines when you understand the core concepts. If you found this helpful and want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out new videos regularly that break down complex web development concepts into simple, buildable steps. And I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below with what you'd like to see next or any questions about this implementation. Your suggestion might just become our next video topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.